हेलम टू ची वाई एस हाउ आर यू आई होप यू आर डूइंग वेल फ्रेंड्स एज यू नो दट आर चैनल वी आर कविंग द सिलेबस ऑफ यू पी एस सी सिविल सर्विस एंड फॉर दैट पर्पज वी हैव स्टार्टेड मल्टीपल सीरीज ऑन आर चैनल द टारगेट यूर प्रॉब्लम्स एज वेल एज मेन्स सो करंटली फ्रेंड्स वी हैव ट्वेल्व सीरीज दट फोकस ऑन यूर प्रॉब्लम्स एंड वन सीरीज दट टारगेट यूर मेन्स सो बट वी डू इन दीज प्रॉब्लम्स ओरिएंटेड सीरीज वी हैव बेसिकली डिवाइडेड यूर होल सिलेबस इन टू ट्वेल्व सब टॉपिक्स एंड वी डेली पिकअप टू टॉपिक टू सब टॉपिक्स एंड वी डिस्कस एम सी क्यूज ऑफ दो टू सब टॉपिक्स एंड इन दिस मैनर uh we cover your uh, all of the 12 sub topics in 6 days and this process goes on and on in cyclic manner and we will end this uh, process only uh, one day before your prelims exam that is on first 31st may because on 2nd june is your prelims of upsc csc 2019 so let's begin discussion of today so today is lecture number 9 and uh, it is of indian polity let's see what are the questions first question is uh, so today i have kept the uh, your this uh, mcq uh, lecture quite easy Uh, so that you can also get motivation first is consider the following uh, sorry consider the following statements a the prime minister is obliged to furnish all information that the pres uh, president may call for uh, reason constitutionally the president has a right to be informed of all important matters and deliberations of the council of ministers so we have to choose that uh, that which of the above is correct let me tell you friends that the answer is a a is correct prime minister is ob obliged to furnish all information to the president and uh, uh, and reason is that because president has a right to ask about such all such deliberations of the holy council of ministers so the answer is a so here is the explanation so this uh, president has the power to seek uh, uh, to seek a kind of proceedings and other things that are going on in in the meetings of council of ministers and uh, the uh, also it has some other discretions also when you will read about president you will get about idea about that for example uh, uh, for every matter the council of ministers advises it uh, advises the president but the president has the power to to send a matter for reconsideration but in case uh, the council of minister again passes uh, such advice then president is bound to give that uh, uh, advice uh, the approval of his so let's move on to the second question second question is the president appoints various ministers and decides their portfolios on the advice of a prime minister b vice president c speaker lok sabha d he makes the decision independently so here we have been asked that uh, ministers are given portfolios on the advice of whom so let me tell you friends that this answer is prime minister because Uh, president appoints prime minister and prime minister uh, uh, then gives the uh, uh, then, then gives opinion to the president who who on the advice of the prime minister uh, appoints different ministers and they uh, and give them their portfolio so ultimately it depends upon the prime minister to whom give the uh, to whom to whom uh, to uh, to whom to give which port, uh, portfolio so answer is a so so this is quite easy uh, question so that is not uh, there is not much about uh, uh, here uh, to think about so this is your second question let's move on to the third question third question is before 91st amendment act 2003 the size of size of council of ministers was determined by so earlier friends uh, before 2003 there was a, uh, a practice uh, to to uh, to appoint the as, as many number of council of ministers as uh, as as the as, as the prime minister wished so after uh, after 91st amendment this procedure was done away with because uh, this promoted totally uh, kind of uh, uh, populist practices uh, because there were lot of uh, prime uh, lot of ministers that were appointed without any work so this depended upon the exigencies of time and situation so the answer is b so there was no no uh, hard and fast rule at that time Uh, but now after the 91st amendment this has been made compulsory that only 15% of the total number members of the house of people can be appointed as council of ministers and not more than that so this is about your third question let's move on to the fourth question fourth question is states that have a bicameral legislature in india are first jharkhand second karnataka third gujarat fourth uttar pradesh so we have to choose that which of the uh, above are uh, are the states that have bicameral legislature that is they have two houses of legislature uh, legislature that is vidhan sabha and vidhan parishad so let me tell you friends uh, that uh, in uh, uh, we have currently we have seven states that have bicameral legislature and jharkhand is not uh, one of them and also gujarat is not one of them karnataka yes it is part of one of them up is also part of one of them and uh, there is uh, maharashtra and then your jammu and kashmir also and the answer here would be second and fourth 
so the answer is C so here is the um, explanation so states like Andhra Pradesh, Tarangana, Bihar, Jammu and Kashmir, Karnataka, Maharashtra, UP have bicameral legislature that is they have Vidhan Parishad also so this uh, helps in kind of uh, uh, in to every decision to, to, to reconsider in a careful manner so constitution provides for the abolition as well as creation of second chamber which can be created by the parliament and uh, the the power uh, power to the parliament is given by the state legislature that that passes uh, uh, a resolution by with absolute majority in for for the purpose of establishment or for that matter uh, for the abolition of state uh, this uh, vidhan vidhan parishad and then pa uh, parliament has the power to make this uh, this second chamber so this is about your fourth question let's move on to the fifth question fifth question is consider the following statements first if the government of india proposes to introduce any new tax it must get the approval of lok sabha second the government must give an account about its receipts and expenditure on the to the legislature so which of the above is correct so we have to choose the correct statement let me tell you friends that here both of these are correct because uh, any tax that government of india proposes to introduce it must get the approval of lok sabha and also the detail about the accounts of the government of india are given to the legislature and the, these accounts include the receipts as well as expenditures of the government so the answer would be both one and two so the answer is c the solution is c so here is the explanation so government has to give the account to the legislature about the money it has spent and resources that it wishes to raise so let's move on to the sixth question sixth question is if the union parliament wishes to move a matter from concurrent list to union list which of the following uh, which of these follows a it must obtain the consent of all state legislatures for the same b the Rajya Sabha must pass a resolution to this effect proving the action of the Lok Sabha c the president must consult the governors of a majority of states and act according to their advice d the cabinet must pass an executive fiat, fiat to this effect let me tell you friends uh, that in case union parliament wishes to uh, legislate on a matter that is me me uh, that is mentioned in state list or for that matter in concurrent list uh, and it wants to move it to the union list then then the the Rajya Sabha passes a resolution to this effect and uh, if the Rajya Sabha empowers the uh, parliament to do so then the parliament has the ability to legislate on the state list as well as on the concurrent list and it is also able to move the concurrent list subject to the union list so the answer is b that is Rajya Sabha must pass a resolution to this effect approving the action of the Lok Sabha so here is the explanation so it is an institutional mechanism to provide representation to the store, uh, states its purpose is to protect the powers of the states and any matter that affects the states must be referred to Rajya Sabha for its consent and approval and the approval of the Rajya Sabha is necessary and uh, the same is true uh, when the matter need to be moved from concurrent list to union list so this provision adds to the strength of Rajya Sabha so this is a unique power that is enjoyed by the Rajya Sabha that is the union parliament can only legislate if the uh, on, on state list or for that matter can move the uh, subject from the concurrent list to the union list only after the authorization by the Rajya Sabha so this is about your sixth question let's move on to the seventh question seventh question is which of these fundamental rights can be found in south african constitution but not in indian constitution first right to basic and higher education second right against exploitation third right of religious and cultural minorities let me tell you friends that right against exploitation uh, is is available to in india also and it is also there in south african constitution so certainly this will this is not the answer and uh, religious and cultural minorities uh, they also have the fundamental rights in south african as well as in constitution but let me tell you friends uh, that first is no India. India simply gives the, the fundamental right uh, to, to basic education and not to the higher education but in South Africa uh, this uh, right to education is, uh, is it includes also your higher education so the answer is one only that is B so here is the solution here is explanation as I, I have already told you that basically this the uh, children rights in South Africa also they they are narrowly similar to right to education 21 in India and they there are also uh, there is a right in South African Constitution that is right to fair labor practices and it is similar to the, uh, that of right against exploitation and forced labor in in article 23 of the Constitution so friends there is a uniqueness about South Africa that there are constitutional courts that are special courts that 
that uh, that enforce the fundamental rights of the citizens but in india it is and these are enforced by the supreme court and high court and also in south africa there is a uh, public interest litigation is a is a unique feature of the bill of rights because in india this is not mentioned implicitly or uh, kind of explicitly and but the judiciary has made it a policy though so right to higher education granted in south africa is not a fundamental right in india so neither it is mentioned in the psp let's move on to the eighth question consider the following statements a the election commission of india can cancel local body elections in case of rigging and both ca booth capturing here it is mixed uh, it is there is a o, o that is missing so r is uh, the election commission of india for, uh, is responsible for the conduct of local body elections so we have to choose the correct answer let me tell you friends that the uh, a is clearly incorrect because election commission of india cannot cancel local body elections because they are uh, they are conducted by the uh, state election commission and not by the election commission of india so suddenly r is also incorrect because the eci is not responsible for the conduct of local body elections so election commission of india is only responsible for the elections of uh, president vice president uh, that and the uh, and uh, your the, your lok sabha and then your legislative assemblies of states so the answer is both a and r are incorrect so the solution is d so article 324 provides for the creation of an independent election commission which uh, that has superintendence direction and control of electoral role and the conduct of elections in india so it is not responsible for the local body elections as, as i have already told you let's move on to the ninth question ninth question is which of the following functions are performed by the election commission of india first it supervises the pr preparation of up to date voters list second it determines the timing of elections and prepares the election schedule third it can or uh, order a repoll in a specific constituency on uh, certain grounds fourth it accords recognition to political parties and allows symbol to them to each of them so we have to choose the correct answer let me tell you friends that all of these functions are performed by the election commission of india it uh, supervises and prepares the up to date voters list and it also determines the timing of elections and prepares your election schedule and it can order a repoll in specific constitution constituency on certain grounds and it also accords recognition to political parties and allows symbol symbol to each of them so the answer is d that is 1 2 3 and 4 so here is the explanation so it is quite clear before you that uh, there is no, there is nothing that is, that is to be explained here you can see it in the explanation part let's move on to the 10th question 10th question is consider the comparison of the powers of the lok sabha and rajya sabha first both houses can pass a constitutional amendment bill but the bill must be first introduced in the lok sabha second both houses approve the proclamation of emergency but an emergency cannot be revoked by any of the houses so which of the above is correct so we have to choose the correct statement uh, let me tell you friends uh, that your constitutional amendment bill it must be passed by the uh, lok sabha as well as rajya sabha and let me tell you that there is no such uh, thing that it must only be introduced in uh, lok sabha it can uh, it can f be first introduced in rajya sabha also so the first is incorrect regarding second statement also friends uh, yes the emergency is has to be approved by both the houses but uh, let me tell you that it is uh, but it is also the power of lok sabha to revoke that emergency uh, ap apart from the power of president to revoke the emergency so the second statement is also wrong so both one and two are in correct so the solution would be none none is correct so d would be the answer so bill can be introduced in any house but it must must be passed by both houses separately so uh, in case of second the proclamation of emergency cannot be made by president unless the union cabinet gives him in written that such proclamation should be made and uh, this promotion uh, proclamation if not revoked it must be laid before parliament and the parliament must approve this proclamation within two months and uh, that must be approved by both houses of parliament and not just lok sabha but uh, the about the pro, uh, uh, revo uh, about revoking this emergency uh, the the the, revo the revo uh, this revoking can be done by the president uh, as well as the lok sabha also so it is not the case that lok sabha cannot revoke the emergency so this is all about friends today's questions if you like the questions if you like their explanations then please do hit a like to the video and also do subscribe to our channel that is a gyas and this is our telegram channel to which you can join and uh, friends if you want to get, uh, get uh, to subscribe to the pdfs of these MQ mcqs you can um, email us at this number uh, the, uh, at this email id that is a gyas21 at the rate gmail.com or for that matter Uh, you you can you can also
contact us at our at our at our own number that is eight nine six eight four two six four eight one. So this is our contact number. You can contact at this number also in case you want the subscription of these MCQs. And uh, friends, obviously there is a certain minimum cost for these PDFs. And why these PDFs are important? Because at the end of the day, you will not be able to see uh, your uh, you will not be able to revise through uh, video series because that would be a wastage of time. And also at that time you will have to revise multiple topics and uh, reading standard books or for that matter NCRTs would be an utter wastage of time. And for that pur pur purpose, you must need some kind of notes so that you can get. All the updates. So this is all about friends today's uh, uh, video. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a